This is a University of Otago podcast. Hello and welcome to Otago University Vote Chat 2011. Vote Chat is a series of conversations here at the University of Otago filmed in the media production studio in front of a live audience and live streamed on the internet and later available for download on iTunes and viewing on YouTube. Okay, so basically what we're trying to do is get uh, politicians or wannabe politicians to come along and tell us why we should vote for them and their parties and interact with the audience here, answer some questions and um, today we have uh, um, not a not an existing MP but a wannabe MP for Wellington Central uh, for the ACT Party, Stephen Whittington. Welcome Stephen. Hey Rice. Hey, so um, ACT at the moment is um, you know, not doing so well, so I'm really interested to talk today about um, you know, where the party's going. But first I just want to know, how do you end up you know, standing for Parliament? Um, well, it's probably uh, like most people, you know, they don't, they're not born and want to become a politician. I certainly hope most people aren't born <laughs> and want to become politicians. Um, I, I wasn't particularly politically active at secondary school, uh, and then at university, uh, I, I debated throughout university, and that sort of exposed me to some uh, ideas that I hadn't uh, necessarily encountered before uh, and some thinkers that I hadn't encountered, so people like Milton Friedman, uh, Friedrich von Hayek, people like that. Uh, and that sort of got me uh, thinking a lot about politics. Uh, and when ACT uh, came back with five MPs in 2008, I worked for Sir Roger Douglas as his research assistant. Oh, okay. uh, and that, that really uh, tied me in with the ACT party, I suppose. Okay, but, but way back before this, when you were growing up, were you interested in politics? Were your family a political family? Or? Uh, no, my family's not particularly political. Uh, I mean, they obviously have their political views, but they've never stood for office or, or anything. But um, is it a sort of right-wing family, or is, uh, how, how would you my, categorise...? My brother certainly wouldn't like to be known to be a member of a right-wing family. Um, I mean, uh, one, one of my brothers is, is fairly right-wing, I suppose. Um, my, my parents don't, don't vote the same way. Uh, I think my dad probably voted Labour up until about 93 and then he switched to ACT. Um, so he, you know, he, he always believed in the, the values of the Labour Party. Um, and then throughout the 80s with that reform period saw that actually you know, those values and the traditional way about going about achieving them wasn't working. Uh, and so he sort of uh, supported Roger Douglas and then uh, moved over to ACT. Um, but uh, in terms of the last election, I couldn't tell you who we voted for. So not, I mean, we definitely have political arguments, but mm. um, yeah, not, not hugely political. Okay, and so you went to Victoria and did what, law and, and Latin, I understand? Yeah, so I... What's that about? Uh, well, I, at, at my secondary school, I did Latin throughout and uh, just had a great teacher in Latin and classic stu classical studies. Um, and that sort of, you know, my BA was the thing I was interested in, Latin and classics, uh, and then law, law is the thing to earn the money, I suppose. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I did at Vic. Okay, and you joined ACT, what, only three years ago? Yeah, that, that'd be about right. So it seems like a, a, a very short sort of period from joining a party to being one of the crucial candidates, <coughs> on, you know, and Wellington Central, one of the kind of, you know, the um, flagship electorates in the country, and um, being high on the party list. Um, how's this happened? Uh, well, I, I think one of the things that the party's aware of is sort of the need to uh, regenerate yeah. itself and, and yeah. bring younger people through. Uh, and so that's probably a, a part of that. Uh, but also, I mean, I worked for Sir Roger Douglas for two years. That exposed me to a lot of uh, ACT Party policies and, and the politics behind the scenes. So that mm. was obviously helpful as well. I mean, there's lots we can talk about with ACT and um, the internal sort of uh, differences that have happened over the recent years. But I, I'm assuming that because you worked for Douglas, you're probably more on the neoliberal sort of economic focused side of the party. Because some haven't been so focused on that, you know, like um, there's always been this tension, hasn't there, in the party about how much to focus on, you know, um, continuing the Rogernomics revolution and how much to focus on immigration, crime, you know, um, popular yeah. stuff. I mean, I suppose in many senses, I sort of regard that uh, that uh, division mm. is actually more apparent than real. Mm. Um, I mean, I worked for ACT for two years, uh, and to be honest, I mean, they all agree that, that yeah. we really need to focus on the economy, uh, and that needs to be uh, essentially the agenda of the ACT party. Um, and then, you know, people disagree over yeah. a couple of other issues uh, and the relative focus there. But I mean, I, I really do think actually that 
uh, most of the people involved in ACT do think the focus needs to be on getting our economy on track. Okay, but I think there's a perception, and perhaps it's just a perception then, that um, amongst voters and you know, people that follow politics a lot, that um, ACT have not really talked about the economy and they've focused on you know, things like three strikes, they've focused on, you know, uh, or Rodney Hyde has focused on lots of other things, you know, whether it be Dancing with the Stars or perk busting, and that um, economics has just not really given, you know, not really been at the forefront. Well, I, th I think one of the difficulties for the ACT Party is, you know, if you if you go to our website and you read what people are talking about uh, and what they're putting out press releases on, it usually actually is the economy. Uh, the thing is, is that certain other policies uh, tend to be picked up by the media as the focus of the ACT Party. Uh, so, for example, you know, if you look at at, at Dr. Brash, he's given numerous speeches on the economy. Uh, if he gives a speech on uh, one, one law for all, that, that's sure. what the media picks up. Uh, and, and so I think, you know, throughout uh, all that period, mm. I mean, the thing that got Rodney Hyde uh, mm. into politics was Roger Douglas and was that reform period yeah. uh, and realising that what we'd tried before wasn't working. I so th I think you're right about this kind of media orientation, but nonetheless, isn't that kind of a strategic mistake, therefore, of ACT to even talk about, keep pushing about treaty stuff? if if you know that the media is going to pick up on that and going to define you by that? Well, I don't think it's a mistake um, in the sense that, I mean, take, take another thing that uh, it's often said that we focus on, which is the law and order uh, mm. three strikes um, aspect. Now, it, it, we, we do believe in, in, in punishing repeat violent uh, offenders harshly, uh, and we do believe that the first role of government has to be to protect citizens from, from violence. Yeah. Um, and so it's not, it's not that it's not our focus, it's just, in fact, it's a key part of our message. Uh, it's just that uh, sometimes, perhaps as a result of the way in which those issues are reported, they tend to drown out of other key messages. Yeah, but again, uh, that might be, uh, maybe you, you're looking for some sympathy here that I oh, know the media aren't um, you know, focusing on what is important to us, but just lots of the students I talk to, I ask them about ACT and they don't really know what it means. They, they kind of yeah, do think it's about law and order. And isn't that one of ACT's main problems, that you know, it's hard to know what the party stands for? People, in fact, some students think it's all about the super city. You know, yeah, well, that, um, <laughs> and things like that. You know, or yeah, I mean, I think, I think you know, in terms of the super city, it's always difficult when you have a role in government trying to distinguish your key messages from the role that you're playing in that government. Um, but I, I think it's true to say that uh, ACT does need to communicate those, those key messages better. Um, and and one, one of the things that uh, I've been trying to do and a lot of other candidates have been trying to do as well is to talk about uh, the economy and a lot of the policies that we support. Yeah, I've, uh, noticed, I've noticed that in your speeches you talk a lot about the economy. And yeah, I, and it's, it's the big election issue, you know, more than, <laughs> more than any other election for a long time. So, um, so maybe ACT should be doing really well. Why, why are you, I saw last night's poll put you at 0.9%. No, I, I was in a debate last night, so I haven't so, seen the poll. But, I mean, um, why aren't ACT doing better then? Um, well, I mean, I, as I say, I mean, I think, you know, that's really up to us to convince the New Zealand public yeah. that actually, particularly on issues uh, in the economy, that, you know, ACT has the, the, the leader who can deliver some real reform. Uh, and, and I think, you know, if you look at the economic situation in New Zealand, um, you know, when people were elected national in 2008, they didn't necessarily just want uh, Labour policies with different faces, but that's what they've ended up in. Because the national government you know, talked about uh, getting rid of interest-free student loans back in 2005. Mm -hmm. They talked about uh, working for families. You know, John Key called mm -hmm. it uh, communism, communism by well. stealth. Yep. And those key, uh, essentially, el election uh, policies of, of Labour parties that were big spending mm -hmm. Labour parties, uh, National's done very little to reverse that. But would ACT really reverse them all? Uh, well, absolutely. I mean, one of the key messages that we've got to get out is that yeah. the government is spending too much. Yeah. Uh, and if you look at, you know, after six years of Labour government yeah. in 2005, yeah. the government spent 29% of GDP. Yeah. Uh, so under would, National, that's 36%. Yeah, 36%. yeah so, that's a really good point. But so would ACT, if ACT was the government after November 26, would you cut it back to 29% immediately? Uh, you can't do that immediately. Well, how long would it take? So, so we think it would probably take about three or four years to scale down uh, th those particular promises and get government spending under control. But if you did get it back but to 29%... But that's not just taking it under control, that is a big cutback. 
Uh, well, it's 29% of GDP, so, yeah. so it's a constant share of the economy in terms of 2005 levels. Right. So given that the economy will have grown at that point, mm. it will in fact be higher than 2005 levels uh, in, a, in a real sense. Mm. Um, it's just getting it back to that level that it was in 2005. And you know that was after six years of Labour government. No one yeah. really believes that the government uh, was too small or that we didn't have sufficient social services back in 2005. Mm. Um, and so, so you know, if we were able to cut uh, government expenditure in a way back to 2005 exactly. levels, we'd actually be able to reduce corporate and personal taxes to 20%. Right. So, you know, those are actually it's a, that's quite a different future for New Zealand than the one that you're seeing from the National Party, for example. Okay. So you'd get rid of working for families like well, that. Not like that, because it's actually, the way it's designed is very difficult to get rid of. But what we'd look to do is replace working for families with across-the-board tax cuts. Uh, it, interest on student loans is, is a simpler issue. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I have a student loan, yeah. uh, and I've looked at the numbers. And if you, if you brought back interest on student loans, yeah. you could actually cut each and every single uh, tax ban by one percentage point. Yeah. Now, if you ask me, would I rather pay... 5% uh, interest on my loan of 45,000 uh, when I earn about that amount uh, at the moment uh, and, and in exchange for that pay 1%, uh, 1 percentage point lower taxes for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I know that the better deal for students is actually paying interest okay. and getting lower taxes. Okay, what about in health for example, would you continue to fund um, the public health system in the same way? Uh, yes, we would, but we think that a lot of that funding should be more contestable, to, so it's used uh, in, the, in the most appropriate place. But that just sounds like National Party policy. I well, mean, the yeah, National yeah. Party haven't done it, to be honest. Yeah, um, I mean, one of the, one of the, if you go back to the 1990s, when National uh, believed in something and actually did have a vision for New Zealand, you know, their health policy there was they wanted to, to split the yeah. people who provided healthcare services and the people who funded it, yeah. so that the funders could go to the cheapest place to get those health services. Yeah. Now, that was actually very successful in restraining but, health costs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and that's the sort of policy that, that a government that did want to deliver quality health outcomes, but not just throw money at the problem, sure. would be implemented. But essentially it sounds like you're still in favour of, a pub, X still favours a public health system. Yes, yeah, we, we definitely still uh, fund health healthcare. But like back in the 1990s when X started, you were kind of quite against a lot of these things. And it, you're so much more differentiated from national, whereas today it just seems you're just a little add-on to national. Like well, you're, you're not that different economically. Well, well yes, back in the 90s, less when, spending, but when ACT was set up, I mean, our health policy then was essentially uh, a voucher program. Yeah. So, so the government would give you money, but you yeah. would spend the money yourself. Yeah. So that's not much different from someone purchasing healthcare being different from the person who provides it. Uh, and, and to be honest, the implications of that would, would be quite drastic. Uh, under Labour, you know, they massively ramped up health mm. expenditure, but uh, a study that was undertaken uh, by Bill, I think, actually revealed that productivity in the health sector went down. So we were spending more money, and for each additional dollar that we spent, we actually got less but, out of it than the last dollar we'd spent. But you, 